Why do we need Jesus? Man was created by God, made in the image of God. Man turned away from God and chose sin. And our sin separates us from God. Jesus dying on the cross for our sins, being buried in a borrowed tomb, resurrected from the grave and defeating death, reestablishes our relationship with God if we accept Christ as our Savior. Without Jesus, we have no hope. When we're born, we're born sinners, born into sin. Let me use an analogy and put it like this. The moment you're born, you're born on an airplane. Everything seems fine. There's people on board the plane, stewardesses working, serving people on the plane. There's a pilot and a co-pilot. All's well. But suddenly, the pilot of the airplane makes an announcement on the intercom. The pilot represents a pastor or a preacher, a man of God. And he says, our engines have stopped. I can't get them to restart. We're in a mountainous, rocky region, and there's no safe place to land. Prepare yourselves, he says. Prepare yourselves. We're going to crash. Now, a lot of people, when they hear this announcement of prepare yourselves, people think I have time. You look around on the airplane and you know, you don't see any real danger. You know, the stewardess, is, she's still serving people on the airplane. The airplane's still in the air. It's still flying. Yeah, maybe the, the engines have stopped. You know, everything seems okay. You know, my seat's still attached to the airplane. My seatbelt still works. Everything's good. I'm good where I'm at right now. You, you look at the airplane and you see some turbulence. It's starting to shake. Shake, shake pretty vigorously. You know, it's, you know, it's kind of rough, but it's tolerable. You know, I'm okay. It's, it's okay. Everything's okay. It's okay right now. I ain't got to be in no hurry. Then they start thinking, well, maybe the airplane pilot can find a safe place to stand up to land and we'll be okay. Maybe my seatbelt will save me and, and I'll be okay. Maybe the airplane won't explode upon impact of the side of the mountain when it crashes. And when my seat is ripped from the airplane, uh, might land in a soft pile of snow. People who think that way are living in a fantasy land. You have one lifetime to get right with Jesus. And it's a short lifetime. Life is but a vapor, scripture says. And people waste time to get right with the Lord. Some people think, well, I'm, you know, I'm a good old boy. I'm a good person. You know, uh, God wouldn't send me to hell. I ain't killed nobody. Yeah, maybe I've told a few lies and broke some of the commandments, but everybody does it. I'm okay. I'm just as good as that person over there. Those people there, they're trying to save themselves based on their works, how good they are. Work salvation is like walking over to the airplane exit and jumping out. And when you jump out, you start flapping your arms. You start working. I'm going to save myself. I'm going to be good enough to get to heaven. I know that sounds silly. But you know and I know that you can't fly. And you're going to fall straight to the ground. And upon impact of the rocks below, you're going to die. That's the first step when you hit that ground. You will open your eyes in hell. And at the great white throne judgment, God will sentence death and hell into the eternal lake of fire. And if you're in hell, that's your final destination, the eternal lake of fire. And that's the second death, separation from God. Now, hanging on the wall over there is some parachutes. One is the real thing. It's a real parachute. That real parachute represents Jesus. Jesus is what's going to save you from the destruction of the airplane. The other parachute is a replica. It looks real. It might feel real. It, it might even look good on you. But there ain't nothing inside. It's empty. 
it's it's a replica. It's not even real. It's a false gospel, a false religion, a a an, an idol, a false god. But people put their hope in those false religions and false gods and false idols. And they strap it on and think, hey, this feels good. I like this. This is nice. I fit right in right here. But the moment they walk over to the airplane, exit door, and they jump out praising their false god, praising their false idol, and they pull that ripcord while they're praising that false god, their praises turn to screams of terror when nothing happens. Parachute don't come out and they fall to their death and they open their eyes in hell because they needed Jesus and they depended on a false gospel, a false God, a false religion. So. Lastly, you walk over there and you put on Jesus. You cinch it up. You open up the door. You jump out. You pull the ripcord, and Jesus is the covering atonement that saves you from the impact of the earth. When the parachute opens up like it should, you gently glide and land safely down on the ground. Now let me put it like this too. Stewardess walks over to you, or to an individual with a real parachute. The parachute again represents Jesus. And a stewardess says to the to the pasture on the airplane. Try this. Try Jesus. Try this parachute. It will improve your flight. It will make life more pleasurable. Uh, and when people hear that, they're thinking, hey, I like that. You know, they like their life the way it is, but they want to enhance the pleasures of their life with more money, nice cars, nice house. Um, kids that listen and clean up the room like they're supposed to they want more pleasures in life uh, they don't want all jesus has to offer they just want some of the things jesus has to offer so they think well okay I i'll try this you know i want to improve my flight i like the sound of that so yeah i'm going to try it i'm going to put my toe in the water and and see if the water is, is warm uh, good for me to to get into uh, i'm not going to commit nothing i'm just going to try it so they they try they try on the parachute you know they need the parachute and exit the airplane but they're just trying it on because they got time you know i'm in no hurry they try on the parachute and, you know hey this thing's kind of heavy and it, it it don't feel as comfortable as i hoped it would they cinch it up a little bit and, you know, I, I, I don't like this. This is kind of burdensome. You know, um, she told me it was, you know, improved my flight. And so far, I'm, I'm not too happy with this. Then they go to sit down in their seat. Again, they need to exit the plane. But they're going to sit down in their seat because they have time. They sit down in their seat and they go, you know, my seat was more comfortable before without the parachute. Now it's not so comfortable right now with this parachute on. I, I, I don't think she told me exact truth about all this parachute thing. So then they grab their seatbelt and they try to buckle it up. Again, they need to exit the airplane, but they're trying to buckle their seatbelt. Wait, wait a minute, my seat my seatbelt don't fit at all like it did before. You know, I liked it better when I could buckle my seat belt, my seat was comfortable and I could kick back and relax. Now it's kind of burdensome. You know, when you get right with Jesus, there's some things in your life going to change. Things ain't going to be like they was before. Some old things that you don't need in your life, God's going to do away with. And he's going to give you some stuff in your life that you need. And so, so things in life is going to change. It's, your life ain't going to stay the same as it was. But some people, they liked their life the way it was. They liked how it was, you know, they just want the pleasures that Jesus got. They don't want to fully commit. They just want some of the things God has to offer. Well, now, you know, they realize their seat belt don't fit. Their seat ain't comfortable like it was. The, the, the parachute's kind of burdensome. 
And then they know there's somebody laughing at them. They're snickering. And then somebody hollers out, Jesus free, Bible thumper. Well, now they're embarrassed. They're being mocked and ridiculed, and they don't like that at all. Hey, this stewardess told me a lie. She told me it would improve my flight to try Jesus. She told me a lie. So what they do, they get up, they take off the, the parachute, and they throw it up under the seat. I don't want that no more. Uh, they, you know, I like my life the way it was. Only thing I wanted was the pleasures. And I all I got was discomfort. And uh, I'll just stick with my life the way it was. Well, another stewardess walks over to another man and she says this. And she presents the gospel to him. The true gospel. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. She hands him a parachute and says, this parachute will save your life. We're going to evacuate the airplane. And when you jump out the airplane, you will need the parachute. And if you don't have the parachute, you will die. Well, he accepts the gospel. He accepts the parachute from the stewardess who told him the truth. She says, it might be a little uncomfortable at times, but you'll be able to bear it. you got to be with you. The parachute will protect you. It's what's going to save your life. He's grateful. Well, thank you, he says to the steward. He, he, he puts it on. He realizes, hey, it, it is a little heavy. It don't, it's not all comfortable all the time. But you know what? This is what's going to save my life when I jump out that airplane door. He buckles it up. You know, hey. I can, I can, I can live with this because that stuff in the past, I don't need no more. That's some trash I need to get rid of out of my life. Um, this here is better than what I had before. I'm looking to Jesus now. Jesus is what's going to save me. He buckles it up. Not only does he buckle it up, he takes a lock and he locks it. And when he locks it, he takes the key and throws away the key. Because he ain't getting rid of Jesus. He's hanging on to Jesus for his dear life. Because he knows that's what's going to save him. That's what's going to give him salvation. Well, while he's doing all this, he hears ridicule and mocks and snickers. Jesus free. Bible thumper. But he's not concerned about that because he knows this is what's going to save me when I exit this plane. He tries to present to them the gospel. Tells them, get you a real parachute. Do away with those replica parachutes. Stop wasting time. You can't save yourself. Get you a real parachute and let's exit this plane together and be saved by the saving blood of Jesus Christ. He walks over the airplane and he jumps out. And as he jumps out, he's praising Jesus as he pulls that ripcord. And again, it opens up as it should, that covering atonement. That Jesus gives you from his shed blood. When that um, uh, um, parachute opens up. And you gently land on the ground. Jesus is what's going to save you. And without Jesus. You have no hope.